It's the Zach Sang Zach Sang Show. Show. Zach Sang Show. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? Good to see you. You too. Hello, How's it hello. going? You guys look Amazing. a little bit more settled in now. Yes, right? It's a little bit different. You're yeah. going to be right here. Iggy Azalea, killing life right now, dude. Welcome back. I'm back, yes. Woo. Congratulations on your studio. It looks great. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you were really one of the first in this new space of ours when it was yellow mm -hmm. and it was gross. Yep. A very different time for you, like early 2015. Yeah. Past that now. Yeah. Like, Yay. You feeling good? <laughs> Yeah, I feel good. Of course. Feeling Wouldn't ready? You? Of course. <laughs> like, I, like, I don't want to get too much into it, right? Because, like, I'm... I'm we like, know. We all saw. We well, know. Well, that's it, right? Yeah. And why well, harp on negative vibes? It's I agree. To the past. Welcome to the future. We're in 2016. Exactly. I think everybody didn't have a great 2015. I had the worst 2000... Like, Dude, I mean, it was just not a good year for the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, maybe mine was a little worse than other people's, but I feel like everybody I know... Maybe it's because they all work for me now that I'm thinking about it. But they were like, <laughs> I'm so glad it's over. <laughs> 2015, that is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hmm, I mean, that just clicked. <laughs> is there a part of you throughout the year, right, where... It, may, did you ever have a conversation with yourself and say, you know what? Maybe I'm going to leave this all behind for a second. Maybe I'm going to take a real breather. Why do mm. I need this in my life? Because I feel like 2015 for you was filled with negatives, yes, but also yes. positives. I mean, Nick is in your life. and Yeah, I got engaged. It was a weird year. There was a lot of good things and a lot of not so good things. Yeah. It's tough. I never thought about um, quitting music. But okay. sometimes I thought about just quitting life, if we're being honest. That was sometimes optional, but for some weird reason, like, quitting my job wasn't. It's my whole life. This is yeah. what I do. I've been, you know, tr rapping or whatever you want to call it since I was 14. And this is all that I know. It's what my gift is, whether you think I'm talented or not. That's what I do. I'm a creative person. And this is my job. And I don't know any other job. And I'm not interested in any other yeah. job. This is the only thing that I'm passionate about. And, and so it just felt like what's a life worth living if it's not doing what you love, what I love to do and what you were really meant to do. Right. I well, mean, I feel like so. Yes. Yeah, me too. I love doing this <laughs> yeah. uh, so yeah I mean I don't think I ever thought like oh will I stop and like yeah. go do some other thing actually I found it a little insulting when I'd hear like uh, I guess what was meant as advice from people I didn't even know like you know when they uh, go in articles and employ someone that you've yes. never even heard of like well this person's an expert at this even though they <laughs> do not know the person they're talking about at all or what the hell is yeah. going on yeah and um yeah so i'd see a lot of advice like maybe she'll go and sell perfumes and that kind of thing that i was like this is a little insulting <laughs> insulting to me <laughs> insulting. as a creative person you know what i don't want to sell perfumes i don't want to be a famous person just to be famous yeah. i don't want to quit my music career and go be an actor or anything and it's fine some people like to do all those kinds of different things as well as music but that's not my M.O. I like to create music and songs and music videos. That's what I like to do. I don't want to sell perfume and or it's a part anything else. I don't want to do that. Perfume isn't the art, right? <laughs> no, it's not where it's at for me creatively. Yeah. Some people it's like selling not. perfume. <laughs> yeah, different. it's fine if that's what you're into. But um, for me, like the thing that I love is creating music and sitting in a studio and figuring out how to put the pieces exactly. of the puzzle together that, that make up an album and putting together things visually. And that's not just music videos, also just all the creative, anything you see behind me on a stage. You do it. My album packaging, everything. I do everything, obviously in conjunction with other people that are of members course. of my team, but I'm involved in all of it because I'm passionate and I love doing it. And that's what I want to do. And I just wouldn't feel the same about anything else. You, there's no re you, you said it perfectly. There's no reason to live without it, right? Because the two are the same, no, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. This is not, I think maybe a lot of people saw me um, and got to know me with fancy and felt yeah. like, oh, this is some fast track to success that she's got, so she should try something else. And it's like, no, I've been doing this since 14. This is exactly. all that I know. And this isn't just something I picked up and maybe I'll just, 
you know, try my luck at fishing. It's like, <laughs> no, this is my entire life. You're synonymous it's, with it. You yeah, know? it is me. It's who I am. And I think maybe you do have a little bit of an identity crisis when that identity gets taken away from you. Yeah. Um, and you find yourself not really knowing who you are anymore or feeling like a totally different person because everything that you're used to doing for the last year or two or ten yeah. goes away. And, you you know, I think it's a, it was a little bit like the way I'd imagine it for athletes when they retire. Yeah. And everything that they are, then it, it goes away and they have to find who they Meaning. are as a person. If they're not basketball or they're not yes. football, then what are they and what do they do and what, what is their passion and what do they do with their day? And I think I felt like that for a little while. And then I picked it up and got back together. So I'm good. I, like, okay, when you, you said it, you said rap or whatever they call it, right? Yeah, whatever you want to call it. Is, is, <laughs> does a part of that piss you off a little bit? That that's the kind not of, anymore. Now like, it's like, whatever. Just whatever makes you happy. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> I don't care. Who cares? Literally whatever, whatever you want to call it. It's fine. In my house, we call it rap music, but whatever you want to call it. <laughs> when I'm doing it, if it changes or you think that something else... It doesn't yeah. hurt my feelings, so you can call it whatever you like. <laughs> you don't give it either don't care. way. You win no matter okay. what. Yeah, it's not really a dig at no. me. So if you're like throwing out the like, it's not hip hop jab, it doesn't Nothing. hurt my feelings. And it's I, fine. I also feel like at this point you're a little numb to it, yeah? Yeah, I mean, what could you possibly say about me that I haven't already heard like probably a hundred times a day on social media for the last year and a half. I, uh, you've, there's nothing you can say. And that's why my respect and admiration for you is so strong because I Thanks. feel like you just, you went through like a personal battle and all these battles equaled an entire war for a year <laughs> and it was like yeah. a personal attack. But like at this point, nothing else can bring you down. No, it's good. I think in a weird way, um, like I was saying, when you have to think about what your identity is as a, yeah. as a person without that, and it definitely makes you question your confidence in yourself and reevaluate a lot of those things. And I feel like I've come out of this even more confident than I was. And I feel very reassured that this is definitely the, the thing that yes. I want to be doing. And, you know, when you do have a song like Fancy, although I've been doing this a long time, that does skyrocket you into the mainstream. Yeah. Um, you know, it is a big adjustment and it's hard to get used to that. And I think sometimes you can find yourself questioning, Do I, did I really want this level of success? Yeah. If I could take back this level of success to have some of those creature comforts that we all take for granted as humans, yes. like my privacy, would I do that? And some days I felt like, yes, I would. Um, and then throughout the last year when I, when I really had a lot of those things or the ability to have a song out and go and promote or yeah. be doing shows and just have my livelihood. I, I actually feel like it it made me think about if it if it's all worth it and it is worth it. And it is worth those little sacrifices Hell that are yeah. really just nuances when you think about it. And I'm glad that it happened the way that it did and that I had the opportunity to really see what life would be like without music or if this wasn't my career and mm. you know what it is worth all of the crap and it is worth all of the things people write about you or whatever narrative somebody wants to make up yeah it is worth it to me to be able to make music and put it out and have people enjoy it and I'm glad that I know that for sure right now so I feel very reassured that I'm doing something that I want to do and it's worth it admirable dude you could have let it defeat you and you didn't you're coming back stronger yeah. Team is the new single. Yep. Digital Distortion. Album. Is the album. Yes. I mean, come on. Massive. Thank you. Yeah, I'm super happy with this single, Team. I just like, it was one of the last songs that I made on the album. And I I had like three or four other songs to choose from for singles. And then and we wrote this it. and I was just like, this is it. Yeah. I just knew it straight away. Well, okay, let's get into the album because Digital Distortion, I mean, right when I heard it, I was like, this this kind of sums up a great deal of your life over 2015. Yeah. <laughs> Have you channeled these wars and these battles? Yeah. And the nonsense that you've literally shifted through for mm -hmm. the last year, and have you funneled it into this album? Uh, yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, I tried to do that in a way that was relatable because, 
maybe for people listening, you might think, well, how do I relate to that? I'm not a famous person. You I don't can, have though. people writing articles about me. But we actually live in this w- world of yeah. technology and social media. And um, even for regular people, you might have somebody else tell a narrative or story about about you yes. online that isn't factual. Or maybe you might be representing yourself in a way that isn't 100% accurate, that might be a little distorted. And it's just like this: these personas that we create for ourselves or that other people create for us, maybe that against our will, that exist online, that's like another version of yourself yep. um, that you have to deal with or try to control mm-hmm. um, in 2016 that people are growing up with yeah. um, now that's the new normal. And I just think it's like really interesting and, and, and complicated and a cool topic to I love talk it. about. Well, because it really does relate, right? Like, even if you look at somebody's Instagram account, right? An average person, they, that Instagram account really, for the most part, is not going to actually ch- tell you who that person genuinely is. No, no, of it's course not. It's digital distortion. It's, it's digital through, distortion. It's through that filter. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And it's all fun when you're the one <laughs> distorting your uh, yes. your narrative. You have but control. Unfortunately, we don't have control. Uh, yeah. over our digital narratives at all. Yeah. That's just all in our own heads. I don't have control of mine and you don't have control of yours regardless of if you are famous or well-known or not. Um, and so it's just, yeah, it's kind of, it's like a runaway train a little bit and it's very interesting to write about. Can you cool. walk me through the album and how, like, it, and the process of just writing a track, right? Mm-hmm. For you, is it is it a series of instances and a, you know a series of instances and experiences is that equal up a song or is it like one distinct thing that happened to you? How does it work and when do you start writing? Like, walk me through the process. Well, the first song I wrote for this album was a zillion, which I okay. put out as a buzz track and everybody heard, and that kind of like set me on the path sonically of what I wanted the sound to be. Yeah. And once we nailed down the sound. Um, then it just became me thinking about what I wanted to say topically and mostly wanted, I wanted to like give the middle finger a million times. That was my (laughs) goal number one. (laughs) Um, so then I guess it was like, how do I channel my frustration and make it not just me being really angry for this album? Because what I love about music and what's always made me want to write music is seeing people enjoy it. And seeing people dance to it and seeing people be able to have that escapism and hear something for four minutes and just not think about whatever's yes. going on. And I don't I didn't I don't want to make angry music, yeah. but I've had a year that was very conflicted and yeah. I don't want to breeze over that in my album and for it not to be evident in there. So it's just finding a way to make it relatable or to say the things I wanted to say and not, you know, make it too aggressive the whole time to where I lose the thing that I think makes me me makes me fun. I like uh, up tempo, cool, of course, music. You know, so um, raps with hooks, man. Really, some of the best. Thank you, raps with hooks. Yeah, and there are songs uh, without hooks. So sometimes I'll write and I'll have something I want to say, and I might come back and yeah. add more to that. I wrote a song, um, Middleman, which is it's basically saying the middleman is obviously my middle finger. <laughs> um, <laughs> And it says, you know, you need people like me to get through your day. Like, you need the bad guy to talk about. So if I'm the bad guy, then I'm the bad guy, but I'm still necessary for your entertainment. Um, And so this is a song that I kind of would add to a lot as things would happen keep happening yes. so and be like and i'll put that in and i'll put that in and <laughs> great i'll add a bridge and now i've got this um so there was lots to talk about do, do you keep like a list and who are you running these rhymes by like who's your sounding board um well the guys in drugs are probably my sounding board the main three people in it um is one guy lou sticks and chords probably meaningless names to you guys, but those are the guys that are in there every day with me in the studio that are making the bulk of the beats and also doing the sound engineering stuff. And then they'll have other people that they're friends with that'll come in and work on particular tracks. Maybe if electronic music, if somebody is someone's strong point, we might bring in a friend to do that. Or if we need someone to play a horn, we might bring them in. And it's kind of this collective of people that are in drugs and there's like the, the, the main, okay. Uh, 
cast of characters that you're going to see every day and then there are other people that come awesome. in and out of the picture but those three guys are the guys that I'm in there like laughing with about life and writing my ideas by but they're kind of bad to run ideas by because they they like to be really controversial like way more than you ever should be and I'm like I don't need any more controversy <laughs> like I'm good bro I'm actually good like they always will be like that's cool but let's take it to that next level um <laughs> <laughs> Anytime anybody talks crap about me, I will have like, I can show you my group chat. It's like, sh- you should diss him. I'm like, no. no. <laughs> oh my God, you just want to get a diss record off so bad. It's not what I'm about. So, so. is that how you keep it? So are, you're not a voice memo lady. Like you have a running group text, right? Yeah. So yeah, if yeah. something happens, that's where inspiration goes. Um, no, my inspiration doesn't go into the group text necessarily. I will have ideas here and there and might okay. write them down, but. I don't know. I'm a real psycho. I'm like the teacher, I think, of the group. Like, I'll listen to a song and then be like, all right, now we're going to talk about that later. And they're always like, why? Tell us. Talk about it now. Like, now I feel like there's something bad looming. I'm like, I think the bridge needs to. (laughs) (laughs) The drums are a little crazy. Uh, And, you know, we'll. Yeah. And songs change a lot. I might write something that's a bridge. It turns into a hook or with team. um, For example, we rewrote that so many times I wow. wrote it with baby Rexa she's amazing she's also Zachary my loves her. oh I love her too one of my my best friend um, her name's Alejandra and she styles me and everything okay. and uh, she's really close friends with baby's manager randomly who like discovered cool. her so we have this connection and my friends friends with baby and so that's, that's how we ended up linking mix. up yeah, and uh, so she writes with this other uh, lady because okay. she's a lady. She's she's older than us. She's you know? a proper lady. She's a grown a woman. woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm like the kid. I feel like a kid. She's a real woman. <laughs> um, yeah, and her name's Lauren Christie. She's okay. super awesome, and uh, she wrote like Avril Lavigne's first album and then a bunch of other stuff. She's really cool. So her, me, and BB all got together after I'd had like five attempts at it, and. BB wrote like this dope melody that yeah. is the team melody and then uh they had to go cuz BB's promoting her song with G Easy right. and so it was 2 weeks with no BB to finish this song and I was like I just can't wait yeah. for her to finish the song so I'm just going to write to the melody and then she came back and we had the oh baby no oh, well, I was like I'm sorry but we I'm keeping it <laughs> <laughs> I love so that it worked out but very organically I love that collaboration right mm-hmm. you, three different artists three different backgrounds three different music styles writing yeah. styles production Maybe just be, maybe I'm just the biggest fan of collaboration and creative collaboration because you never know what you're going to get when you put great yeah. minds together right but th- th- that's special. Uh, I had such a good time writing with Lauren and BB, and we wrote a couple of other songs uh, together, and I think maybe one or two more of them will end up on my uh, album. But I just, I really like BB. Like, that's someone I would be friends with, even if neither of us were musical, yeah. just personality wise. I really get along with her. And we had a really good vibe in the studio because we were recording at uh, my friend Cords' place. So cool. it didn't feel like. You know, the clock was ticking down. You're in an expensive place. And we could go and have breaks and eat hamburgers. And, and chill. Everybody would bring a snack to the studio every time. She See, bought me some fun. cupcakes. And I bought some donuts. And it was just <laughs> cool. It felt very relaxed and organic. I definitely want to write with her more in future. Because she was somebody I just felt like... Sometimes you write with writers and it's, yeah. they aren't as collaborative. And that. that's not intentional. It's just sometimes writers will make up their own ideas in their head um, with a hook and then say, I've got it and go write the hook. And me, I, w- I want to collaborate on the hook yeah. and I want to write the hook too. And so she definitely like blurts out 500 million ideas and so do I. So we mesh really well, it's awesome. all three of us with our songwriting styles because we're all throwing out ideas and writing yeah. them down and picking what's good. And that's when I feel like something's truly uh, collaboration. Yes. So I... I liked working with both of them. How in tune are you right now with pop music? And what what scene do you do? You, do you follow both hip hop and pop, or are you following um, everything? Are you in tune yeah, with any of it? Everything, nothing, <laughs> all at the same time. <laughs> 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 I don't know. You know what? I didn't. I didn't listen to anything for 
pretty much all of 2015 just okay. because I was working on an album. And it's not necessarily that I don't want to listen to anything in case like it accidentally sounds like what I've heard. Although yeah. that does happen. But honestly, when you're in the studio 12 hours a day, when you get in the car, you probably just don't want to have like the pounding inside your head going in the speakers too. You've just listened to a lot of music. I and get it. It's a time for your brain to to kind of have a breather before you probably go home to whoever you live with and yes. have conversations with them. And that's my time where I could breathe for for the album process. So you, I didn't listen to a lot. I like the work-life balance you just really displayed there. Yes, I have one. Is it, okay, so is it weird to live like... I mean, how, how how do you and Nick Young live? Like, are you like normal are, people? No, right, like that's, <laughs> what, that's what that's what I'm asking, right? Like, is yeah. this like is it like married style? Like, are you coming yeah, home every day, eating dinner together? Definitely feels like we're married. It's probably okay. felt like that for a while. <laughs> a while. We own a home together. It's like real. Yeah, we've been living together since. 2014, like May 2014. This is we've been living together so a while now. We're going on two years. I'm obsessed with your of, dogs. Yeah, well, it was my dog's Jelly's birthday. Just, oh. just yesterday, she's Aww. two. Ooh, happy birthday! Oh my yeah. god, so old, <laughs> so old. I know she really has to get it together. <laughs> <laughs> what is she doing? Teenagers. With her life? <laughs> I know the worst. She's very sweet, but yeah, just I think we have a fairly normal life. Nick was like, you have to get back to being you. I heard that a lot last year. He was like, you're not who you like. You're not your self. You don't want to go anywhere or do anything. And I think it was hard for him because like, you know, our relationship has always been going out and doing crazy things and last minutes, like, you know, being spontaneous. And um, I I think I didn't have much of that going on last year. I didn't really want to go anywhere. What'd you do? How'd you fill your time? Um, well, recording an album. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's that. Um, I started a production company and Hell I yeah. bought the rights to a couple of books that I really like and believe in and also some television shows um, from Australia. This is kids shows uh, for like 10 year olds. So maybe you guys will watch it. Maybe you won't. Um, <laughs> uh, so I talked to the BBC Australia about some stuff that I really believed in, was a fan of when I was a kid that I had some ideas to rework it and they awesome. lost my ideas. So we're developing like different television shows for uh, kids that are going to happen because Nick has a son who's just turned four yesterday. So I spent a lot of time watching kids shows um and i was like you know what some of them are great but a lot of them just kind of like live around a house that for some reason has no adults in it yeah Um, there's always some excuse as to like why they're not there yeah and i was like you know what i think that it's like they're great but i would love to see something a little bit more creative and with a little bit more like imagination injected into it the way that kids shows were when i was watching them um i think they were a little bit more ridiculous in a different way um to what they are now the concepts are always crazy yes wizards or spies but they seem to always be in the same set of uh, in a house for the most part and so um yeah so i'm developing these shows and i spent that takes a long time that, as uh, you know. the process is crazy it's crazy and even acquiring the rights to hard. a book that's hard or try acquiring the rights to a television show that already existed in the oh. 90s like it's a lot and there's <sighs> i love three, it two books and one uh, kid show that I'm going to redo. So I did that and got all that together, started my production company. My production company actually officially produced my uh, video for team that okay. I just did um, with the other guys. This guy's Ludi Media that did uh, all my other videos. But Dope. this was my first like time with my production company doing everything and getting it all together, like getting the legs to it all. And, and you've you've been so hands on. I remember the we were mm-hmm. talking about the Pretty Girls music video. Yeah, that was you, right? You yeah. had a really big hand in all of that. Yeah, I have a big hand in a lot, and a lot of people will say to me like, "Why don't you do other people's music videos?" Yeah. Blah, blah blah. You know, I don't think I. I respect other people's creative visions and what other artists have envisioned for their own self. I really want to be able to create the things that I want to create. And so with the movie development and uh, the kids show development, I I like that because I can do what I kind of want. Um, without having to consider maybe what the client would want. I sort of am the client developing the show for whatever it is. So I've really enjoyed that over the year. And then I bought two horses and started show jumping them. So I 
did that a lot and still am busy I, I yeah heard, you busy. got hurt busy hurt you I, I landed on my neck last week oh. yeah oh. I did I almost had to be performing team uh, in a neck brace but Jeez. I'm good <laughs> yeah it's like, like not funny but. I'm good yeah. the like, thing <laughs> is if you own a horse it's inevitable that you are going to fall off yeah. that horse it's like owning a motorcycle and you do motocross you're going to fall off your motorcycle it's like you're happen. going over jumps yeah. very fast you're eventually going to definitely fall off or you're not trying hard enough cost of doing business yeah it was funny though because i i rode him and we did like our arena set like jumping and everything and um didn't fall off then uh went to take him for a walk up the canyon on a nice little scenic warm down and he just like totally lost it and went like insane and i got bucked off and landed on my uh neck like landed here on my neck and rolled on it uh but luckily i went yeah i went to the chiropractor and he like put it all back, like my whole body, I think, back in place. It was like, and your ribs, and your lower body, and everything <laughs> is, and, and, and now you're, you're going to die. Normal. So he, now you're, yeah. So I got put back together, and now I feel fine. Well, you got the horses right to relax, right? Somebody suggested to you that, like, you should, it's tranquil, right? Riding horses, it's a good escape from reality. Well, um, I know that it is because I'm from the country and so everybody, a lot of people have horses. I never had the luxury of owning horses when I was growing up, but a lot of friends did. And so I would go to their houses and ride them and I always enjoyed it. And I just, honestly, I really just wanted a hobby that I could do that wasn't business orientated. All the kinds of things that I'd want to do, like developing shows, it still has a business element to it. And I just felt like it is important uh, for everybody, no matter what you do, to have an outlet that isn't dependent on your job or income, yes. but just for your own sanity and just so you know you always have something that you can go and do and enjoy if you do get fired from your job one day or what when you retire, you have something that you know that you enjoy and you don't have to try to rediscover that passion. You already oh, have yeah. it. And it's it's good, I think, for everybody to figure out what that might be for them, what their hobby is. And I think tried horse riding again um, as an adult and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very tranquil, yeah. yeah. But also full of adrenaline because I am jumping over stuff pretty <laughs> fast. <laughs> um, but I just li- I like I like horses and I like the whole atmosphere and I just, I like the people at the barn. They don't really care at all that I am Iggy or anything about that. And it was nice to have somewhere that I could go and just have like normal friendships with people who didn't really care about what was going on or weren't in, wasn't in that world. You need that. Yeah, it's important. And you lose that. I, yeah, you lose it quickly, I think, when you get successful at anything, if it's music or yeah. whatever it is, you you know, it becomes your life because um, you're always trying to get more and more successful at whatever Things it is change. you're doing. Yeah, so it's good to have something that's like, you know what, this is very humbling. I'm a beginner at this and I'm not used to looking silly at what I'm doing. I'm used to being the master of what I'm doing and for people coming to me and getting advice on what I want to do. And yeah. I'm not in control of this horse or what I'm doing. And I look completely dumb probably for the first <laughs> eight months but it's free of it but it's good it's good it's uh, i think it's good for you as an adult i think we get like so used to kind of expecting to instantly be great at everything yeah um so it's sort of like putting the training wheels back on something like learn how to ride the bike it's back from the ground yeah something from the ground up yeah from the ground up exactly learning a new skill set is hard as an as an adult we want to be good at everything straight away and i think it's hard when you're a grown-up to have patience to actually acquire something like that whereas when you're a kid maybe you're a bit more willing because you're learning a lot of different things in life so it's good to pick up something as an adult i gotta say something you're one smart (laughs) i love it Seriously, and I don't think people applaud you enough. And I like this has been a conversation where I haven't had to I haven't had to speak much, but I've soaked in so much knowledge, and it feels good. You're gonna go buy a horse. Well, <laughs> well, you have really um, you have such an understanding, right? And I think this year and your journey has really groomed you and really like set you up right when it comes to business and producing, expanding your horizons, mm-hmm. and how to escape it all, and the way you look at life and play and personal. It just I really applaud it, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's really, inspiring. It really Thanks. is a great outlook. It makes yeah. me happy. I feel, like I said, I feel like it was definitely, I think a lot of people wanted me to quit or for yeah. this to be something bad for me and I think it's actually been very good so thanks guys it could it could have brought you out or it, <laughs> it could have made you stronger and I think yeah, it made you I feel stronger like it made me stronger I've definitely 
did a lot of things I wouldn't have done. Yeah. Otherwise, I probably would have just gone back with the producers I was working with or, you know, whoever was making top 40 hits and gone and made some more. And yeah. it wouldn't have really meant anything particularly to me. I would have really enjoyed it, but it wouldn't have meant as much as what this does to me now. And yeah, now I get to do other awesome things that I've pursued that are creative and not just music videos. Hell so yeah. Good. And I got to applaud your honesty, man. I was, you know, obviously reading a lot of the stuff that mm -hmm. you recently did, interviews and stuff. And you talked about, you know, being in a meeting at the label mm -hmm. and the label saying, we need to increase your social media following. You need to start taking Instagram posts with your friends, your celebrity friends. Well, I actually got told it's recommended I um, take more pictures with influential athletes like Nick Young. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. Like, you know like, that we're getting married, right? I live with him. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just bizarre. That's a disconnect. Like, babe, come on. <laughs> Take this picture. <laughs> <laughs> Let's ruin this intimate real moment that we're yeah, having. I'm like, you know, it's fine. Obviously, yeah, one plus one equals two. Your followers plus my followers is going to get more likes. That doesn't take a rocket scientist no. to figure out. But <laughs> I don't know. How do you when, when you're hit with that note, right, from your label, mm. they suppose, they're supposed it wasn't just my label that I hear it from. Management? I hear it. Well, you know what it is? Sometimes they'll have um, like social media like experts Quote and you'll be doing experts. something yeah, that you think has nothing to do with anything. And they'll be like, well, we've looked at all your accounts and these are our recommendations. And they always include that. Jesus. I was like, I'm sure if I posted more pictures of my ass in a G-string, I'd get more likes. But <laughs> I'm going to do it. And you know, the sad thing is that there are people in this town and in this world, I know them. Who only hang out with quote unquote friends. I know. To take an Instagram photo just to post it onto social. Yeah, I know. You know what? It's funny because everyone's always like, well, she doesn't have any friends and everyone just hates her. And I actually have Jesus. a lot of friends. Um, <laughs> That's terrible. And so a lot of them are famous, but I don't like go out and take pictures with them just so people can know that I'm supported. I'm, I'm very supported. And if I feel like. I want to capture the moment, then we will. And otherwise, I don't need to like document every time I hang out with somebody that's a celebrity too. Or you capture the moment. I don't know. This might be crazy, but you capture the moment for you and the friend you're hanging out with. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, like I hang out with Demi all the time, and I don't think we have very many pictures of it. <laughs> I, I yeah. haven't seen many at all. Actually, zero. Yeah, you know. She's gonna be in your wedding though, right? Yeah. Yeah. She better be. How's that? <laughs> how, how is how's that coming? Do we have a date yet? I did have a date. I was going to get married in August and I planned everything for it. But my album, you know, it's not being pushed back. I wasn't ready. I wasn't finished on time yeah. when I thought I would be. And originally I thought I would have this single team out back in October. Okay. Um, and then it didn't get mastered on time. We went into Christmas. I thought it would be out the end of January. I ended up changing labels from being based in the UK to now being based solely in America. Yeah. That's a big change. You have to renegotiate your entire record deal. Of course. It's a lot of paperwork. Um, and so that process took so long that here we are at the end of March. And I thought that my album would be out early April. Yeah. The single would have been out earlier. And it just hasn't happened that way because of, you know, these Every, little bumps it, in the road that everyone has. It's stuff. Yeah, it's fine. So, you know, it's just it's now it where I'm going to be having an album out and wanting to promote it and tour that album. And it would probably be the same time as my wedding it's too much it's just too stressful and um you can't nick is totally understanding and cool and did not care at all i didn't even want to bring it up and i was like what do you think about little he's like it's fine i don't whatever whenever you want to do it that's when we'll do it how cool is that though yeah it's super cool he doesn't mind at all so it's pretty much prepared and now we've just changed the date to another day early next year cool i want to yeah. know like what your like wedding vibe is because like you're like a very different cool person like you're yeah. not gonna have a traditional mm, kind of not yes yep. and no traditional ceremony but not traditional reception yeah okay kind of like we're not having a sit down dinner we're having a bunch of chefs and you can go and say like this chef is cooking steak and that I'm going to go get whatever kind of steak I want and they make it and then over here we're doing another type of yes. and everybody can go and get what they want. Like the and ultimate buffet. Yeah, kind of. Like they call them food stations.
games nowadays. Oh. <laughs> uh, but it's just more fun, you know. I don't want everybody sitting down at like their table and yeah. nobody's there talking and you're waiting for your food. And when does it ever taste good? Like hardly ever when it's catered for that many people. <laughs> let's be real. So I think it's more fun to just have everybody be able to walk around and try everything and talk to everyone. Because Nick's family and my family, I mean, our mom and dad, they, they you know, they know each other, the immediate family, but yeah. there's, you know, aunts and uncles and stuff that they've never met each other. So how involved are the parents? Zero uh, percent involved. Really? Yeah, they're not involved. You know what? I think it seems like parents are more involved when maybe they're financially contributing yes. to the wedding, which that. isn't fair. happening in yeah. our case. No. Yeah. Um, so there hasn't been any phone calls made to ask <laughs> their opinions. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you like it. They'll get an invite when they get an invite. Yeah. <laughs> I, I and wanna, it'll be great. <laughs> I want to love my, it. I want my wedding to be like that. Yeah. yeah, it's better. Better to just think about what you think is best for you. Exactly. It's your day at the end of the day, if you're out there getting married and considering parents, you got to you know, they got their weddings and now you're going to get yours. So your ring you is want. beautiful, by the way. Oh, thank you. I keep seeing it as your hand flashes by and it's like... It's, it's in here. Wow, I mean, wow. it's... Okay, so <laughs> like, what's a more... Like, when you get that ring mm-hmm. and you look at it and you're like, do you think to yourself like, one, holy <laughs> I'm in love. But two, is it like, holy <laughs> I've made it. Like, I've <laughs> made... I've made myself into not just a real person, but a winning real person. Like, I've done well in life. Um, I don't know. Not really. I uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess I don't really. It's gorgeous. Think of it like it's a success thing. I'm just like, wow, that's really nice that somebody actually wants to like spend the rest of their life with me. That's like a commitment right there. Beautiful. That's like the nicest thing someone can say to you. Hey, yeah, want to ride this out for life? <laughs> Especially considering, you know. I never thought with Nick, like, oh, does he like me because I have success? Or yeah. I, That was never something I felt with him, but especially the fact that he proposed to me, like, in June 2015, like, <laughs> the lowest you could possibly be. I'm like, okay, Aww. this this guy's in it for the long that haul. <laughs> Nothing else could go wrong. My he's heart still just like, smiled. Yeah, he's still in it. He's still, like, definitely rocking with me. So, it's awesome. I, yeah, I, I was like, yes, definitely. Anybody that's going to stick around through this, yes, <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> of course. It wouldn't matter what the ring looked like. If we could make it through this, at this point, yeah, we could make it through anything. Like smooth sailing. Yeah, throw it at us. <laughs> like, come on, I'm ready for you. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Do you, guys, do you guys ever talk basketball at home? Because I know there was a lot of trade rumors back in February about Nick possibly leaving L.A. You know what? There's always trade rumors yeah. about him leaving LA I've been this is the third season that we've been dating and every February he's about to leave LA and (laughs) the first time uh, I like got really sucked into it because I just started dating him a few months ago I really liked this guy and I'm like oh no is he gonna leave and I got really hyped about it and he didn't seem that hyped about it like uh, I don't know maybe I I don't think so but I I don't know you know he has such a good relationship with the boss family and I just don't really see him getting traded unless it was like an absolute necessity for some mega mega trade I feel like he gets thrown in the mix a lot because there are a lot of other people that play similar positions Mm -hmm. Um, but just based on his relationship with with the actual team um, and who's owning it and running it uh, I don't see I'd be surprised if that happened. Surprised if he left LA? I'd be surprised, yeah. Would you go with him? With him? No, I wouldn't go with him because we own a house here, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Like, we're not going to sell our house. Nick's whole family lives here. You and go back and forth. Yeah, I, he'd probably get an apartment or something and I'd come and visit him when I could and he'd come here and then the off-season would just live like normal humans, humans <laughs> in our house. But yeah, I would don't think we'd like uproot and buy a whole new house. We've had our house almost two years now, and it's just getting to a place where it really feels like home. comfortable and home. And I don't think um, he would want to no, sell you can't it. Can't do that. No, it's hard to find a good house out here. Once you find the one you like, you got to hold on to it. Well, and then like once you get comfortable in it, once you get comfortable with the surroundings, mm-hmm. the whole situation. Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, you don't take that for granted. No, you really can't. No. Yeah, I don't think we'd get rid of it. It's no. too nice. I love our house. It's my dream house. Wow. Iggy Azalea. We've covered so much with you, friends. Yeah. We have. Digital distortion. I mean, I, nothing Nothing sums up 2015 in two <laughs> words know. really better than that. <laughs> I know, I know. It's beautiful. 
It is. I, I love it. It just came to me. <laughs> it's happened. I was like, this is it. <laughs> Team is the single. Are yeah. we looking at any collaborations on this album? Yeah, there are features? a few. You Who? know, it was definitely my mission this time around to really make sure my first single off the bat didn't have a collaboration. Okay, good. And we've spoken before. I think some people tried to take my success away from me as if yeah. it wasn't earned by me somehow. It's attributed to whoever was singing the hook. Yeah. Um and of they <laughs> yeah. were <laughs> yeah you know like I don't I don't want to downplay anybody's contribution I think everybody I've collaborated with has bought something amazing yeah. to the records but I also know that I can do it alone too yeah. um and I know what I bring to the table and I'm confident that it's you know, it means something. Exactly. It's, <laughs> you make him a great deal of the actual song, and you bring a lot yeah. to the freaking table. Uh, Th- that's it. Yeah, uh, I <laughs> contribute. <laughs> it's not that hard to explain, and the proof is pretty much in the pudding, okay? Yeah, so I just felt like, for me, it was kind of it's like a per- one of my personal goals was I want to make, I really want to make a song that I believe in and that is potentially hopefully a hit yeah um if other people like it too and i really would like to have a song that's successful that is just mine so that nobody can try to take that away from me which is funny because i'm singing on team and people are like that's not you singing i'm like okay so (laughs) now it's not me (laughs) but it was them now when it's just me now it's not actually my Uh. voice all right i was like well you'll see it live babe so we'll (laughs) jesus that will come to rest soon it's definitely my voice but uh, yeah, it was important for me just to have that and to know that I could yeah. do it. And it was tough, you know. It's like I did. I took vocal training and to try to learn more about my voice and how it works, and um, you know, learning to actually hear notes properly and be yeah. able to sing them straight away and key and pitch and there it's really tough and i don't think you can like learn to sing like ariana grande but there is a lot of technical ability in singing that i definitely didn't have a grasp on at all and i think like being able to understand a lot of that technical um part of singing has helped me just understand my own voice more and what what i'm capable of exactly um and i think shows on team it shows on that record i I feel confident with it and i don't feel like it's me singing and feeling feeling or sounding uncomfortable before i had tried to sing records that had never even made it on my album and I, i would hear them and think this sounds like me trying to fit into um, a, a singing chorus yes and it doesn't feel natural to me and it doesn't sound comfortable to me and it doesn't feel comfortable doing it and I wouldn't want to perform it live on stage at all. That would terrify me. Um, and I don't feel that way about team at all. It feels very comfortable and natural. So I'm happy about the way it turned out. And I think the whole and when people try to put you in a box or they try to, you know, give you a genre th- mm-hmm. th- there is none. You know? Th- no. You do it's your just own thing. Whatever. That's it. Sometimes it's more of one and sometimes it's more blue and but, other times it's yellow it's whatever whatever feels good feels good sounds good yeah and dude it's funny because it i works. took a trip to uh to china hello hello it was so fun <laughs> i love china my <laughs> uncle well actually I, all my cousins are chinese funnily enough because my auntie is chinese mm-hmm. and my uncle lived in china and speaks fluent mandarin for like 12 years wait so i have all this chinese family <laughs> wow. that's pretty cool yeah it's pretty cool so i've been a lot as a kid we would visit my uncle a okay. lot in summer in china and like run around and go shopping and you know <laughs> hang out with my auntie's family always really fun so i was super excited we got to go back to china when'd you go i went maybe October I think I went last year for a Vogue party but it was what was really cool about it and kind of changed my thought process when I was recording um I feel like a lot of people were like well what are her lyrics and it made me be like do I want to be really lyrical maybe you have to be really lyrical and prove to people yeah. like I have punchlines <laughs> you know <laughs> yes. um and I was speaking to our tour guy who was okay. taking us around in China and he was like you know I love rap music but English isn't my first language and I don't understand a lot of what they're talking about because I don't know the slang or sometimes I just don't even understand yeah don't know it good enough but I really like saying it I like the way it feels to say it. I like the rhythm of saying it or singing the song. And I was like, you know what? I want to make songs and I like that. And I want to think about how it feels to say it for somebody or a child that can't even maybe grasp English properly yet. Instead of thinking about what's the best punchline, what's the most I can 
fit into this, pack into the puzzle. Yeah. I just want to think about how it feels to say, and that became my approach. And that's when I came up with things like team and that just feel good. That's how you create a hit record, right? Yeah, I agree. My test is always bring in a kid that can't speak properly yet and see if it bumps up and down. <laughs> yeah. If it does, then you're good money. But it, it's true, right? It's true. I, it's so much more than the lyrics mm-hmm. to a certain point, And that's how it connects globally. That's how it connects yeah. to both a kid and then somebody who's in their mm-hmm. 90s. Yeah, absolutely. You can't music, you know, is definitely breaks down the barriers and you, and you can't deny something catchy and that feels good and you want to dance to so your approach to music is i love it thank you yeah it's Seriously. a fun approach it's phenomenal any other questions from our friends jill dan no i just think a lot of the haters are bandwagon haters you know what i mean i think they just see yeah. somebody doing they just hop on the train <laughs> that's all we can that's all we could talk about today was like because we really love you and you've come here and we've talked a few times and it was mm-hmm. like you're always so pleasant and it's Thank always you. so knowledgeable and it's great. <laughs> and that's all, like, yeah. Jill's like low key obsessed a little bit. Oh, okay, well, 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 that's well, not nice. I'm glad you like me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. And, and that's all you could talk about was like, these people don't really dislike you. Well, it's, it's called, I think it's called Anne Hathawaying, right? Yeah, really? Like, they Anne Hathawayed you. Like, What's where that? Every, like, where everyone like loved Anne Hathaway and then all of a sudden one person was like, you know what? I don't, I don't like Anne Hathaway. Everyone's like, yeah, we don't like Anne Hathaway. <laughs> she hosted the Oscars. <laughs> yeah, and then the yeah. I didn't know we didn't like Anne Hathaway. I've been liking her this whole time. I guess I'm not a bandwagon. That's how we feel. We like Anne Hathaway. We like you. We don't like Anne Hathaway? (laughs) Oh. That's like a weird mob mentality nonsense, right? But I think 2016, your music is going to speak, man. I hope so, because I've got a lot to say. Um, (laughs) Amazing. Yeah, so I hope so. I'm really proud of this album, and I just, I love every song on it. I really do, and I... I just feel like my goal was if I can love something, I just hope that it can shine through, that I feel that way about it and that it will in turn, you know, stick onto other people that way that I felt making it. So I hope people will hear it and feel as good as I did making it. Do you think you'll tour again? Oh, yeah. I'm too, I postponed my wedding to tour. Hell yeah. Yeah. I've, I'm, I'll so be I better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or I'll have, to, I'll have to answer to Nick. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it? Is it touring or don't you want to get married? No, it's I do want to get married. I'm going to tour. Both. Yeah. yeah, I feel like last time with me canceling the tour and I know I spoke about, you know, my uh, album actually came yeah. out and all that music existed for maybe two years before it kind of came into fruition and for people to hear it. And you you live with songs for a long time and you get burnt out on them and maybe you don't enjoy performing them as much because they're they're old and they're I not where that. you are creatively. And that's how I felt uh, with my last album when it came time to tour. Yeah. Um, so I really want to make sure I avoid that this time. I, I want the album to come out and I want to go on tour two or three months later when people know the songs and they've lived with them for a little while, but I still really enjoy performing, performing them. them. The timeline is crucial on both sides. Yeah, for you exactly. And for, for the, both. For it's fans. how you get the best performance from the artist. You don't want, you know, me to have performed Fancy 200 times in the last year and then I'm coming exactly. to give it to you. It's not going to be the best performance that you could have got or my energy or excitement. It's just not. It's going to be going through the motions and you don't want to. I don't want you to pay 90 bucks for that. No. So this time going to, yeah, put the album out, go on tour. Iggy cool. Azalea, dude. The love for you is real, my friend. Oh, thank you. I love you guys, too. Seriously. I'm Give excited it. now I've got an album so I can come back some more. Come on. Mikasa <laughs> is su casa. And really, so are my radio stations. We, oh, uh, The you. love for you is real and team is going to be a hit. Digital Distortion. Yes. Iggy Azalea. We clap for you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm clapping, too. Thank you. <laughs> You're allowed. <laughs> thank you. Cool. Whoa. Thanks. This is better than having, like, random white, you know things things all over the place like some places 